has been the uh, theme uh, uh, for this revival. And I looked up Gethsemane, uh, and it talks about the place outside of Jerusalem mentioned in Mark 14 as a scene of the agony and unrest of Jesus, a place or an occasion of great mental and spiritual suffering. And you know, that place where he was at, uh, there was some suffering uh, that was taking place. Not only was there going to be physical, but mental suffering, and the things that were to come, uh, him knowing all things, he knew what he was going to, uh, the time was come, and the suffering was fixing to come. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 22, uh, starting with verse 29. The Lord, praise the Lord. Luke 22 and 39. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, and was come to his disciples, he found them asleep for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And when I think on this, uh, Jesus was praying in the garden. Uh, he told them in the first part, which we've not been over a lot of this, <laughs> so it may be a repeat for you. Uh, but pray that ye enter not into temptation. Uh, and, and Jesus was our example of prayer. We see how he agonized in prayer and he prayed to the Father. He had a relationship with God. He knew who God was. And I believe that we're going to make an impact on this world. We've got to know who God is. We've got to have a relationship, a firm foundation with our Lord and Savior. Amen. He had that relationship. Pray, get ahead of <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, uh, he said, oh, he knew what suffering was fixing to take place. And saying, Father, if, if thou wilt be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He knew that he was going to have to do this. Jesus knew. But he knew the pain that he was going to have to endure. As we talked about in class, I can imagine Jesus walking by and seeing these criminals being crucified on the cross in that day and the great agony and the suffering that took place upon that cross. Nobody in their right mind would really want to have that suffering. You know, physical suffering. But Jesus was willing to have that suffering. Why was he willing to have that suffering? that you and I might have deliverance from sin. Yes. That sin would not reign in our mortal bodies anymore. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But that we could conquer sin. Yes. Amen. He didn't come to save us in our sin, but save us from our sin. Amen. God has come today to set you free from your sin. If you're here today and you have sin in your life, you have things that you'd like to get rid of, Come to the Master. Amen. He is able yes. to deliver you Amen. from anything Amen. that you are bound by. Amen. He doesn't want us to be bound by things. Right. He wants us to be set free. Amen. Now I know Amen. as Christians there's times where things may come our way, temptations and different things, and something may overtake you. Don't get discouraged. Go back to the source that helped you. Right. We'll read about Peter here in a little bit. How Peter had went back on the Lord. But God, 
Jesus had compassion on him. He's not telling him, Peter, you're going to deny me thrice. <laughs> but when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. That's right. He knew what was going to take place. Yet he still loved Peter. As he still loves you if you went back on God. If you no longer are walking in the light of the Lord. He loves you and he wants you to come back to him. If you are walking in the light, he wants to keep you in the light. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. What agony he was suffering at this time. As our brother was saying, the scientists have proven that this is scientifically possible or whatever, you know. But we know it's the scriptures. It tells us it's possible. And whether it was actually blood coming out or a big drop looked like blood or whatever it was, he was agonizing. He was praying. No doubt he was praying for the disciples. He's praying for himself that God would give him strength. And God never let him down. He sent an angel to strengthen him, to help him in his greatest time of trouble. Have you ever had a time of trouble where God has come down and strengthened you? I thank God for them times of strength. Now, you had to go through the hard times. Jesus knew that there were going to be hard times. But after the hard time, what glory and rejoicing and happiness took place. Because he knew, I provided a way for these people. I have given my blood, shed my blood for these sins of these people that they could come unto me. That's what I imagine he might be saying. Think about this. Good preaching. He, he did this for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to read, continue to read on down. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Jesus already knew what Judas was going to do. He loved Judas. Didn't want him to do that. He loves you. He doesn't want you to do wrong. But if you do wrong, there's consequences for your actions. Judas had consequences for doing wrong. And I'm telling you today, there's still consequences for wrongdoing. When they which were about him saw what would be found, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. Permit this to be. This must be. And he touched his ears and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priest and the captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves, when I was daily in your uh, in with you, I'm sorry, in the temple, stretch forth no hand against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Jesus allowed this to happen. He even told Pilate, basically, you wouldn't be able to do this unless the Father didn't allow you. You know, he was telling him, don't you want to speak? Don't you want to defend yourself? Jesus knew that he needed to do this. As a sheep to the slaughter, as the brother said in different scriptures that was used, he knew that there was a reason he was going to have to endure this. Praise the Lord. That's right. Hang on, we got... 
Turn with me to Hebrews. Hebrews 9 and 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the New Testament which God hath enjoyed uh, unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without blood, shedding of blood is no remission. There's no, uh, no forgiveness, basically. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should uh, be purified with these. But the heavenly things, thee themselves, uh, with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood and others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this to judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? And we think about this without the uh, shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And once he died, it wasn't like uh, the blood of sheep and rams and all these things that were sacrificed. No longer was there a continual sacrifice, but this was the ultimate sacrifice that was made for you and I. Isn't it wonderful to think that no longer do we have to uh, take animals and sacrifice them and sprinkle them and do all these different things that they had to do in the uh, Old Testament. But we have direct access to our Lord and Savior. We can call upon Him any time. He knows that I want a closer relationship with my creation. I want to do this for my creation that I can have a close relationship with Him. We you think about the love and, and the desire for his creation to be close to him and to embrace him and embrace his word. Think about that. I, I, I just thank God what a sacrifice you made for me. Like somebody said, he didn't need it. He didn't need anything. Thank you, Sister Smith. Somebody said he didn't. Wasn't for him. His spotless lamb, sinless lamb, that came, that was slain, we was the one that needed the Savior. Yes. And we still need the Savior today. Yes. Let's go to Job. You still praying for me? Yes. Job chapter 2, starting with the first verse. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to the, uh, present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against 
him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered, uh, the Lord had said, skin for skin, yea, all, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So went Satan before or forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore bulls from the soles of his feet unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd uh, to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Doest thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speak as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this Job, or, and all this did not Job sin with his lips. And I thought about this was Job's Gethsemane experience as the Lord has suffered. But we see Job, the Lord blessed him and restored him more than what he had after all this took place. Is there a, a, a place and time that you've been that maybe you've been through? Uh, Gethsemane that we've talked about? Is there a place of suffering you've been through and you can think about? I know that before my daughter, and a lot of you know this about this, before she passed away, I said to the Lord in the front of the whole congregation, you know, I said, wouldn't it be great if we could be like Job? And the devil would say, Have you considered my servant? Have you considered my servant, Brother Harvey? Have you considered my servant, Sister Mary? <clears throat> and it wasn't long after that, I lost my dog. <laughs> and I thought, Oh God, I don't, I don't want to be like Job. <laughs> Praise the Lord, it was a experience. That was worse than death. I had nightmares for three months. I could see my daughter shot in the ground. Blood coming out. But I tell you, God was there. God was in that place. God touched my daughter. And I can tell you, I know. He confirmed that she was all right. God, you lost. You're going to make it. You know, I pray to God. I'll tell you, God didn't let me down. Thank the Lord. Thank God didn't let me down. I may have let him down, church, at times. But God has never let me down. Oh, you little high, you little high. Through my darkest hour, God was there. Through your darkest hour, God will be there. Doesn't matter what you go through, God will be there for you. But I want to tell you, it did bring me closer, and I also prayed this years ago. I said, God, whatever it takes, I want to be close to you. And my wife left. But God, through suffering, God has made me strong. I went through it, Brother Harvey. Can I come out on the other end? Praise God, I come out on the other end. <laughs> That God did not let me down. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise I thank God. Amen. I think about Job. Job, the over strength. He trusted God. Yes, I had to trust God. I didn't have no nothing else I could do. Yes. I remember after my daughter was shot, I come home. Took my shirt off. And something come over me. Wrath come over me, going come over me. I said, I'll kill them all. And I said, no, I can't do that. And I fell to my knees. It wasn't three seconds. I didn't feel that way long. And I prayed it off. God, I can't do that. I can't do that. God help me. Yes. <laughs> I'm not Amen. Amen. 
kneeling down in that living room and saying, God help me. I can't do this. I remember as, as time went on there, the next day they wanted to cancel church. I said, well, okay. I said, you got too much on me. I said, all right, we'll do that. I don't know what to do. And I got to pray in Kelsey's room, crying, praying, about an hour or so. I got to go to church, is what I said. I got up from the floor, and I got to go to church. I called everybody. I said, we're going to church. You're going to pray for me. And uh, I went to church. God gave me a message for that Sunday. I can't even remember what it was. But I went to church. And as we was rejoicing, praising the Lord, God moved in and started blessing. I started crying. He said, walk around the church with your hands held. I walked around the church. And God said, I'll carry you. I'll never forget it. I think I walked three times around the church. God said, I'll carry you. And I mean the Holy Ghost moved and he blessed. And I preached the message that day. God just, I, it's like it didn't even happen. I got in the whole pit. It was like it didn't even happen. And I preached the message. How God, I don't know, just the strength of God. I preached the message. Afterward, I said, I asked God to let somebody know if my daughter made it to heaven. It's tearing me to pieces. I said, let me know or somebody know. I said, God, I've got to know that you made it. And my dad looked at Mom and started saying stuff. I noticed that. And I was dismissing, fixing to do the announcements and dismissing. I noticed that. And when I come through, Dad said, Thomas, a, a boy spoke to me. It was 24 hours after my daughter passed. That Saturday or Sunday at 3 o'clock. He was choking, couldn't breathe, and crying on the couch, he said. And a boy spoke to him and said, don't worry, she's with me. And then it called and said, and I'm coming soon. And you know what? That helped me. Yes. Joy come upon me, yes. you know, for this. But that wasn't it. I didn't mean to tell all this tonight. But I'm gonna, I guess I might as well go ahead and tell it while I've got it. I said, Lord, I said, I know you spoke to my dad. He said it was the same voice and when he about got bit by a copperhead, he said, you better move. Twenty-something years ago, he said, it's the same voice told me to move that day and I didn't get snake bit. The same voice spoke to me, he said. And I, I said, but I know he, he heard, I believe your voice, but just to make sure, God, give me another sign at the graveyard. When we go to the graveyard today, would you give me another sign that my baby girl's all right? I'll never forget it. I was sitting there crying. I was over there. Somebody's here. Levi was here. My wife, my ex-wife, and I call her my wife. She's still my wife. She was sitting over here. And uh, this dog with a bad broke leg, just broke plumb up, and he was black, and he was white chest. I remember him just playing today. Was trying to get through the crowd, and the preacher in the back was shooting him off. Yeah, yeah. The dog, and that dog kept coming through, trying to get through. Brother Anders was up front, though. and that dog come around, and when he found that hole, I seen him. There's a hole over here. Nobody's standing there. He almost ran up through there. Not walk. He went right to Lisa, my wife, and he sat down and looked. Then he come over to my son. And he sat down and he looked up. Then he come over to me and he sat down and he looked up. And I thought, God, that's my sign. And my daughter loved dogs. And I thought maybe it'll be a dove shooting straight up in the air, but I didn't know what the sign was going to be. I said, that's it. I petted that dog. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. Now, just the peace just come down. It come down that day when I was sitting there. Then the dog went over there and sat down and Brother Andrews got done. 
like a train. And then the dog was happy afterward. I'm like, that had to be God <laughs> doing that. I just don't, you know, there ain't no other, there ain't no other explanation for it. And I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. And the sun was out. It was almost 80 degrees, felt like. It might have been 76 in January. Not a cloud in the sky. Everybody there was happy. That's odd. Everybody, except my boy was laughing. We was at the fellowship hall. I was happy, you know, but it hits me again later, you know, grief sets in. Even though I know God, uh, right now it don't bother me at all. I'll just tell you. Every now and then I miss my baby girl. But I know God was doing what was best for me. I trusted God and he didn't let me down. It may not been the way I wanted. I said, save my children. Save my children. He saved my child. And uh, I thank God for that. And I'll tell you one more thing. My son also, well, five months later, one more thing. A lot of you may know this, but some of you don't know this. So, so repeat for some of you that I may have told you. But my son was hurting so bad. He'd cry in his bed. He would hurt. And they were buddies. They went to school together. They And, and he said, I feel like God allowed us to go to school together. Because Kelsey, for some reason, didn't start back to go to college until after Levi graduated. And they rode together to Harmon. Back and forth. Back and forth. He'd tell me. I thank God gave them this opportunity to be together once again before she left. And uh, and well, anyways, he was hurting, and uh, I was hurting. I said, God, I can't handle this no more. I said, Would you allow Kelsey to come to me and hug me, put her arms around me, and tell me, you know, just comfort me? And uh, and then I said, No, let her go to Levi. Would you let her go to Levi? And then five days later, on Sunday morning, six o'clock, for some odd reason, we're not usually up that early, but me and Christian were sitting on the couch, and Levi then called his mama crying, and she couldn't understand the thing. And he come over to tell me what was going on. He come through the door, and he looked like something was just wrong, you know. I said, what's the matter? Dad? had a dream. He said, it was in a big white room. It was white everywhere you look. The sky, the, the ceiling, the floor is big. And he said, I was standing there and I seen somebody about right here, about five foot away. And uh, I turned to see who it was. And he said, it was Kelsey. He said, she was standing there smiling and she'd had something on her neck that looked black. Well, maybe she got shot, I don't know. He said she was standing there smiling, and she just just kept smiling and hugging, wrapped her arms around him like I asked him to come to me, but I said, no, go to Levi, and hugged him and comforted him. He said, I just cried, and I cried, and I cried. And I said, God, I, asked. I was shocked, really. I'm like, I didn't expect it to happen. <laughs> I was shocked. You've never been that way. You pray something. And I said, I asked God to do that. <laughs> it was like, a, it was like a, a, a surprise to me. But he done it. But he knowed I needed it. I said, I'm not going to ask you no more. I know where she's at. And I'm not asking you no more. And because uh, my daughter, she had time. When she was shot, she fell to the floor. She held her hand and held her hair. She looked up at the sky. And it took several seconds before she died, she said. But she had she knew. She was real sensitive about the Lord. And when I would preach, she would get convicted about every time. Uh, but I thank God, you know, He moved on my behalf. But through my Gethsemane experience, I was made stronger. I had confidence in God. I said, God, oh, when I needed you, you were there. Now, sometimes he may not answer your prayers because you may not need them. There may be things that we ask for that we don't need. But at that time, God knew I needed that, 
and he didn't let me down. Neither will he let you down when the hard times come. I think of there, I'm not the only one. Many here, Sister Smith and different ones here, have had a hard time here lately. With loved ones or different things passing. And there may be that Gethsemane experience for you. Uh, but I want you to know this, that God will never let you down. He'll never let you down. No matter what you go through, Job went through all this, and it, what did she say? If I could find it. Then, his, then said his wife unto him, Doest thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. You speak foolish. He knows. He trusted. She didn't trust in the Lord. Sound like that? But he trusted in the Lord. He knew who he served would take him through the fire no matter what he'd come against him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he'll take you through the fire Amen. no matter what comes against you if you're living for God. If you're not living for the Lord, I want to ask you to come to this altar tonight. I want to give you an invitation to experience the Lord. He can change your life and He can be your God and you can be His son and daughter. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you've got, you may have to go through some things, but I want to tell you, God will be right there with you. I had some more scripture here, but I don't know if I'm going to read all of them. But it's about taking us through the fire. I believe God is getting ready to take us through the fire. Yes. I believe there's going to be some things that take place that we're going to be tried as by fire. But we'll come out pure as gold. Yes. But we've got to stay faithful to the Lord. Yes. We've got to stay faithful to His Word. Yes. We can't be doing our own thing. Sister Smith, would you come to the piano to